And that was the first single from the outstanding CD release, which we've been playing here on The Upper Room with Joe Kelly and G. DeSo on WVOF in Fairfield, Connecticut. The CD's called Protest in Disguise. We heard God is So Funky. And uh, we're really honored to have all the way from New York City. And uh, he's really excited about his new record, Myself. Welcome to The Upper Room. Hi, how's everything going, man? Thank you for having me on the show. And I just want to let everybody know that, you know, um, I'm originally from New Orleans, so I always have to mention, I gotta, can't, can't forget where I come from, got to mention my roots, so I'm from New Orleans via New York, <laughs> you know, so I just want to let everybody know what's, what's going on, I'm happy to be on the show, man. Uh, you, you've lived in two major musical cities, and uh, t- tell us about growing up in, down in Louisiana and New Orleans and, you know, discovering music and your talents. Wow, man, it, you know, just... You know, I always tell people, like, being from New Orleans and living in New York is, like, the best of both worlds. It's like the one-two combination because, you know, obviously being being in New Orleans is, is something that I grew up grew up with and I had the, um, the um, pleasure of being exposed to, like, jazz and blues at a young age. And you know, my parents were into, like, a lot of um, old-school classic R&B and rock and funk and jazz. So I always had, like, a wide array of different type of music in a household and just... When you walk out the door, you hear everybody from like Louis Armstrong to Neville Brothers to Dr. John and the Rebirth Brass Band. You know all of these great, wonderful acts. So what I tried to do is, um, what I think we really did on the record was really um, capture the essence and the roots of of the New Orleans vibe and just really contemporize it and give it in you know pre- present it in a more of a rock alternative and a hip hop approach because you know you as as well as everybody else knows New Orleans is synonymous with gospel and jazz and blues and hip hop to a certain degree and extent so what, what I really wanted to do was just to showcase a different side of um, New Orleans culture and being in New York has allowed me to take that New York fast paced attitude and to slow things down with the with the southern you know uh, the southern way of doing things the New Orleans approach so it's, it's really like the best of both worlds musically and, and, and that's what we were really going after to like really capture that southern fry funk as i would like to say and just mixing it up with the soul and, and the, the, the rock and the, and the hip-hop you know uh, myself is with us his cd's called protests in disguise and it's available on his record label kutor music wear and uh, you can get it at cdbaby.com and he's based out of new york city now and uh you've worked so you mentioned some of the people that uh, you grew up listening to and, and working with. Uh, how about on this record? You, you work with uh, some innovative people as well as yourself, DJ uh, Musaka. Yeah, actually, you know, um, the, 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 good, the great thing about the record, like the, the whole recording process was a labor of love. It was like everybody who, who was actually able to work on the record was really hand-picked. You know, um, DJ Musaka has been a, um, a fixture on the DJ scene in New York and originally from Boston, but a fixture on the New York scene. And he's also a great music producer. He's He runs one of the biggest studios in the world, um, um, Dev, Dev Jam Studios, um, called Studios. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we had him, you know, who co-produced most of the album with me. And then also a lot of the musicians that worked on the record were actually band members of mine. So I, I kind of went around stalking people for a while, <laughs> you know, say, okay, I want you to be on the record, I would love to have you on the record, and it, just, it was just that kind of energy and synergy that we was able to, like, really fall right into the groove with it, that people who got involved, you know, um, and ironically enough, when this record first saw the light the day, it was right around the time of Katrina, you know, so it was like, in a sense, we was kind of foreshadowing what was going to come, like, the week that Katrina hit was originally the week that we finished recording the record a couple years ago, so it's just been... A, a continuation of this trying to spread the word to try to see positive things come out of something that was very negative in light of whatever you know that happened and my family actually went through it personally with the whole Katrina experience so it's just been it's just been giving birth and just trying to like utilize this record as as a means of um to create some some sense of change and awareness that's what's going on in society and I think the record and the music is very reflective of that like songs like where we going like really um, pinpoint that and then other songs on the record like Black Mama really showcases the struggle of what women go through every day so you know with that being said I think the record is diverse and we you know we were fortunate to like get those type of musicians on board and get the different types of other producers to like lend their expertise and um, their skills to the project. 
Oh, you're based out of New York City. Oh, before we should also mention your MySpace page, uh, who is myself? Actually, you know what? The um, MySpace is going to be changing very soon. It's going to be in um, in transition. So right now, the best way um, there's a couple ways that you can actually get all the downloads and all the exclusive myself mayhem as i would like to say like all exclusive downloads videos and pictures and obviously this record is look um it's available on itunes so if you go on itunes and you type in post test and disguise bonus tracks you're going to see the whole album come up so you can get the the whole album or the singles but um our main website right now is definitely the cdbaby.com forward slash myself in the number three after myself that one is um, acting as the um, official site right now because we're in the process of, um, like I just mentioned to you earlier, we just signed with the um, Universal Music Group, my label, Couture Music, where um, so the record is going to be everywhere available on Amazon and you know via MP3s um, and also physical CDs and, and all the major retail chains in the country. The official release date is May 20th is when the album comes out. So you guys got it early. You got the exclusive. Yeah, we appreciate it. I did want to get it in advance. You can definitely access it through iTunes and also CD Baby. And if you purchase it from CD Baby, you get a poster and some other um, add-ons that we threw in there as well. So it, it's just been that kind of, it's been, it's, this, this whole record coming out has been in stages. And I think it's very important for people, the listeners, to know that the music industry is going through a severe change right now in, in its positive aspects and its negative aspects. So we've been actually been forced to kind of ride the wave. So when things um, don't seem like it's um, it's comfortable, we've had to like really adjust to like the the marketplace with you know CD sales versus the MP3s and technology versus the norm. So we've been fortunate to kind of strategically place the CD, get it out there, build a campaign, grassroots. And um, the, the feedback is great. The people are um, loving it. You know, there's good, 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 um, good energy coming back to us. Uh, we're going to get into another track off of Protest in Disguise. We, we love Rude Boy, and uh, myself is with them. It's, it's definitely a summer song. Whenever I hear it, I always envision, like, all right, summer, spring, bring it on. You know, and then it's like 25, 30 degrees cold in New York today. So I'm like, yeah, right. not, quite, not quite yet. Right. <laughs> So uh, this is from Protest in Disguise. Myself is with us and uh, right here on WVOF in the Upper Room. And we're going to be coming back and speaking with myself about some upcoming uh, projects he's got going on and, and furthermore. So thanks. This is Rude Boy from Myself. That was from Protest in Disguise from our special guest right now. It's an honor to have myself here on the Upper Room. We heard uh, Rude Boy. And, you know, you've, you've got some upcoming uh, shows coming up and uh, some appearances. You want to talk about those? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of great movement going on right now, you know, um, not just with the music, but there's a couple film projects that I did, too. Like, I did one film project um, called Auto Redemption with Buster Rhymes and Tom Berenger that's probably slated to come out sometime in the summer, and I did a, um, a music documentary called Pocket Change um, featuring Oliver Stone, the Academy winning doc, um, director Oliver Stone. is a um, documentary that, that's shot on location in different various cities around the country. It has a strong social and political co um, accompaniment, like what's going, mirroring what's happening now in society. So, and uh, my story was really told about, you know, my family going through Katrina and my experience growing up and um, living in New Orleans and things of the nature. So, really, you know, our, our main focus is to tour and also to, like, really reach reach people in a multimedia type of um, fashion. You know, um, my whole angle is to mix mediums where, where in, in the past it's been more stagnant. You know, I really want to combine film, fashion, and music and really create a, um, a, a marriage with those three kind of um expressions, you know, and, and that's really what we um approaching and focusing our efforts on for the near future to like really um go out there and, you know, network and, and link up with other artists, whether it be touring and you know, I'm just open to like exploring my um my um avenues as an artist and just looking to continue to grow for the new year. So definitely if you go to our website you can see what events we got coming up. We have tour dates lined up for New York and we'll probably start doing more national touring in the summer once the record is out but pretty much all of our clips and tour dates and up to the date information is on our cd baby site that i mentioned earlier and it's and it's getting warmer and uh well it will be getting warmer it's not warm today but uh it's hot that's yeah. why you got to keep 
keep the fire burning. Yeah, you know, right. it's, getting, <laughs> it's getting hot, man. Like we were talking about earlier, I just I can't wait. I'm definitely like a spring spring kind of artist. That's why we chose to kind of put the record out in in May, and you know that's where we tend to be more mobile and just you know I feel like you know there's a lot of outdoor festivals, and we really want to kind of go back to more the grassroots way of um, putting the music out there, doing more in stores and doing more um, Q and A's. I'm doing a lot of Q and A's these days, like. You know, the live component is great when you see an artist, you can connect with them with the live band, but you hearing them speak and, and being able to connect with them on a personal level, I think that, that really gives us an advantage point when we can really, like, you know, um, connect with people, everyday common folk, you know, everyday one-on-one type of thing. So that's that's the approach that we're taking for my my project. So I feel like a politician most of the time. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, hey, you got to sell your record. Yeah. So, uh, you know, promote it from, from that angle. So we're just looking at it from the whole lifestyle approach, you know. Uh, you work with some some of the best in the business, the Roots, uh, Chris Thomas King and R. Kelly, and uh, I, you know, for Public Enemy, Arrested Development. You know, I've, I've just I did recently two shows with Arrested um, Public Enemy, and Speech and I from Arrested Development are really really good friends. And believe it or not, yes, they are still around. They just put out a new record. Yeah, that's right. They got a new one. Yeah. Yeah, rest of development. They're doing really well overseas. A lot of these artists, you think they're not, you know, you want to run at VH1 Special Rarity now, but they're still here, like Chuck D, Public Enemy, Arrested Development. You know, that's the type of music that really inspired me to really get get behind the type of music that I want to create. Not only something that has a, a good groove and a good feel to it, but also saying something, you know, having a social component I think is so necessary right now not only with music but in society in general so you know working with those people like that has just been a great learning experience and also you know I cannot forget people like Now Rogers who's who's you know oh, yeah. an advocate and a fan of what we're doing he, he lives about five ten minutes from the studio yeah, has he ever come to the station before no he, he was supposed to come with Taja Seville but I think he got tied up yeah if, if you run into a man tell him myself say what's up oh I definitely will yeah yeah, because it's, it's just those type of circles, you know, that we're really kind of running running around with. And, you know, it, all, it definitely all comes back to the music being strong and being compelling and having something to say and something to offer. But I think a lot of it just has to do with the timing. And I think right now there's a void in music right now. I think it's, it's at a, to me personally, I think it's at a, one of probably its worst periods ever. I think, you know, whenever you're at that low point, there needs to be a revolution to come about that. And music has always been at the forefront of creating change. From from a physical standpoint, it has to come from the music and the rhythm. And, and that's, in essence, that's what protest and disguise is all about in a nutshell. That's the theme. It wasn't like we sat down. It wasn't like I sat down and said, okay, this is what I want to do. But the spirit led me to, and compelled me to go in this light, to put out something that was that young kids can identify with, middle-aged people, and also adults and senior citizens can connect with. And I think that's what we really did on the record, you know? Uh, so we're, we're going to get into a couple tracks, and, and we got to have you come by the studio when it gets warm. And, uh, yeah, you know, around... I would love to come out and, you know, and um, definitely um, jam out in, in, in Connecticut. When, when we get some dates lined up, I'm definitely going to let you guys know, and maybe we can get some passes, some free tickets away on the show and stuff like that. But... I'm really excited about, you know, because you guys are not that far from us, and when it starts getting warmer, we definitely plan on touring, like, Jersey, Connecticut, Philly, all these surrounding territories, so definitely this is the beginning of, of uh, more to come, you know? Yeah, myself, Protests in Disguise, you can get it at cdbaby.com, uh, and also you can uh, get it via iTunes, Protests in Disguise, myself, official release date is May 20th, right? Yeah, official release date is May May twentieth. Um, Universal Music is the distribution, and um, it's going to be available via my label, Couture Music West. So between now and then, you'll be hearing more more um, press and media. Um, we just did something with Billboard magazine about a month or two ago, and you know, God is so funky. If you haven't seen the video, you got to check it out. You can Google it or go on YouTube and check it. But it actually is getting played on MTV Jams. And also um, MTV in Japan, um, we get a lot of good feedback in um, Japan and France, the overseas markets. So definitely in the next couple of months, there's going to be more of an awareness campaign to support the record. So be on the lookout for the, um, the guy with the crazy long dreads. Yeah, right, right. 
So, yeah, so yeah, I stick out like a green thumb. <laughs> that's all right. You got your style, so you're cool. So we're gonna go with a couple right now. We're gonna go uh, song dedicated to Jay Dill and James Brown called "Still Ain't Ready," and seg right into the uh, second single from Protest in Disguise, "Baby, You Drive Me Crazy." So thanks, myself. Thank you, man. I'm, I'm, you know, let, let's let's keep the communication open, and you guys enjoy the show and support this man, Joe. You know, say he's 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 hard at work. You know, what I'm saying support this guy and, and keep independent and strong music alive. One love. All right, right on. Thanks, myself. No doubt, man.